Whoosh. Yo. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Say hello to Sean. So, for my curation assignment, I decided to do mine as a vlog for some reason. And so today I'm going to be discussing with you, the uh, wonderful people of the world, um, uh, the uh, sculpture by the uh, New Zealand-born artist Jody Stewart, uh, Fake Forms Number 1. And my first uh, citation that I will be discussing in order to provide context for this uh, work is called The End of Art Revisited by one S.K. Wirtz, and that uh, explores the concept of the end of art as conceptualized by influential art critic Arthur Danto. Uh, in Danto's view, the end is thought of not so much as a stopping point or a terminus of art, but rather as a conclusion, a period in which the art has lived since it separated itself from its historical roots in the early 20th century, the, the status of art today, uh, the ultimate ending period for art, um, its ultimate conclusion. Perhaps a more apt description of this would be endless art, because from here art really has no end. It can't... it's not striving for anything anymore. Um, in essence, Danto believes that art has entered an era in which art serves entirely as its own purpose. Uh, in the past, the art existed to convey meaning. The physical object that constituted the art mattered much less than the theoretical meaning behind it. However, given that meaning can be expressed in a variety of ways separate from art, in time it became clear that the tie between art and meaning was superfluous. This has left us in a state where meaning is no longer the most important element of art. Rather, the physical object, the physical artwork itself, uh, has overtaken meaning as the ultimate uh, goal of art. Um, in fact, many artists have tried to strip their art of as much meaning as they possibly can, you know? You can only get, get rid of so much. We are human. We are always going to uh, inject meaning into things whether we intend to or not, but some artists have made a point to try to avoid doing that. And this understanding of the modern view of the purpose of art is a fantastic framework for the work of Jody Stewart. Uh, her sculptures feel very devoid of any particular meaning or purpose, uh, to the point that they almost feel like these natural constructs that have always existed and are completely beyond... Um, human concepts like meaning and purpose in the first place. My second source um, comes from one Rolf Dieter Herrmann, uh, who wrote in an article titled Art, Technology, and Nietzsche about a, work, a sculptural um, interactive installation piece that debuted in Osaka, Japan in 1970. Now, one question that I find myself asking myself frequently as an artist is, what is the future of art? You know, in an era of endless art, uh, where anything can be considered art, where do you progress? Where, where, what's the next logical step for art? And the answer may lie in the ever-changing technological landscape of our time. Uh, Rolf Dieter Hermann wrote uh, about the piece um, that it, it took the form of an enormous spherical mirror, the largest spherical mirror that was ever constructed. Uh, and when the viewer would walk into the, the mirror, uh, there were all these complex lasers, and those lasers would... Uh, activate radio signals that could only be picked up by a headset worn by the viewer, and as you walked around the room, uh, the way that you moved and interacted with the invisible lasers would cause the radio transmitters in the floor to emit different signals for your headset to pick up. So the way that you experience the room is completely independent uh, from anyone else, especially because it's a mirror. You're seeing yourself in every direction. Um, and that's something that was only possible with the technology that was available in the 70s. You know, in 1870, none of that would have been possible in the slightest. Um, and so, thinking about this as it relates to Stuart's work, uh, you know, the 3D printed, uh, 3D pen made objects and digitized backgrounds of her works um, would not be possible without modern technology. Uh, they're completely dependent on things that have only come about in the last decade or two. Um, and so that gives them such a fresh, unique, exciting feeling. And that sort of uh, feeling can be evoked as we move forward as artists continue to tap into new and newer forms of technology. Um, and then my next quote, or my next citation, I should say, comes from the sculptor Anna Urson, who wrote in a 1993 journal article titled Planck's Programs in Art, Computer Graphics as a Sculptural Tool, about the myriad ways in which digital tools can be applied to the world of sculpture. Um, of most importance to the work of jo Jody Stewart is the section on digital and physical multimedia artworks. Uh, Urson writes... 
I wanted to show the horse as a heroic symbol of the human struggle for survival, the horse as a link between natural surroundings and human nature. Rhythmic drawings done on a computer show a link between nature and human influence. In the same way that Urson used digital art to link the natural and human worlds, uh, Stewart uses digital technology in combination with human movement, uh, you know, by using a 3D pen, I mean, these very organic human lines, but in such an, with a, such an inorganic, unhuman uh, medium to create sculptures that feel simultaneously very organic and very inorganic at the same time. Now, my fourth uh, citation is a video uh, that explains... Um, a gallery put on by Jody Stewart at the University of Northern Colorado. She speaks in the video. Um, she is providing insight into her own work using her own words. Uh, and so what she says about technology and art is, you don't have to use technology in the way it was meant to be used all, all the time. It can be creative. Um, so Stewart tries using technological tools such as a 3D pen and digital backgrounds to evoke everyday digital experiences in a physical tactile space, you know, using these things that we don't really feel that, think that that odd, that are many ways that are just sort of normalized for us, and then using them in ways that are very not normal in an artistic way um, in order to sort of make them more tactile and relatable. And the resulting figures feel almost biological and organic. You know, her, many of her pieces, including uh, Fake Forms Number 1, have this very sort of almost playful feeling to them. Um, you know, they, they, look, they look like... If they were blown up a hundred times, they would just be these giant playgrounds you would love to crawl around inside of. Um, and uh, by combining the worlds of the digital and physical, Stuart is able to create these new landscapes that expand upon both the digital and physical worlds in unique and creative ways. You know, adding digital into the physical, adding physical into the digital, and this combination that just feels... It, it's so fascinating to look at. Um, and then within the world of media studies, this has to do with my last citation, uh, there is an important distinction made between old media and new media. So my, this citation is an article from Southeastern University uh, that describes the difference between old and new media essentially as a primer. Um, old mo media usually refers to things like radio, television, vinyl records, uh, whereas new media is social media, blogs, video games, etc. Um, so... New media are often very interactive and focused on connectedness, and of course they're also digital, uh, whereas old media is much more analog and there's a much clearer disconnect between the creator and the person uh, r interacting with the media. Now, whether or not you consider arts on either end of this, or like as part of this media, uh, is a little uh, up to personal interpretation, but it does relate to art nonetheless, you know. Um, an important thing with understanding old media versus new media is that at one time, what we consider old media was brand new. You know, television wasn't around forever. When television came out, something like newspapers would have been considered old media. Now they're really old on their deathbed media, uh, but still, nonetheless. Um, so, you know, it, it's important to remember that old media or new media will be old eventually, and there will eventually be a newer media that we can't even really imagine today. Um, and so, in order to stay on the cutting edge of art, it's important to also stay on the cutting edge of technology, having a firm grasp of what the, the, new, the newest things coming out, what they can do for us in art, uh, and constantly thinking about how technology applies to art, and um, just focusing on new opportunities. Because, you know, everything that can be done with paint has been done. Um, that's not to disparage anyone from trying to paint, uh, but rather, if you're going to paint, think about how you can apply new information of our modern world that didn't exist a hundred years ago into your painting in order to create something fresh and new. The same thing goes with anything, really, any media, any artistic medium. Um, so yeah, just new technology pretty much always open, opens new opportunities in arts and media, and it's the people who are on that cutting edge exploring those new opportunities who are able to be truly successful um, in the arts and in pretty much any field, really. So that concludes my five citations. You can find all five of them in the description. You can also find a link to my script just so that you have a tactile, more tactile version of what I'm trying to say um, if you're interested. And that'll be it. So smash that like button or I'll smash your face.